I have come to Morocco to learn about natural building and vernacular architecture. If you watch my videos often, you probably know that I work in architecture, but if I'm honest, throughout the past six years of studying and working in different architecture studios, it's never been something that's felt truly aligned with my values. There's always been something that's felt off about the whole industry. The constant pillage of resources, the excessive waste on building sites, the way it often deepens the divide between people with money and those without. And because of this, I've felt quite dissatisfied in my career and there's been such a deep sense of longing within me to find a way to use my design skills and my love for creating beautiful spaces in a way that uplifts and unites rather than separates and divides. I've just had this intuitive feeling that surely there's something else I could be doing with these skills. But over the past few years, I haven't had any any sense of direction as to how to follow this longing but one evening a couple of months ago this changed for me and I started discovering the world of natural building and it felt like something clicked inside of me. I spent a night lost in the depths of YouTube watching videos of people dancing in mud building homes with their hands and watching documentaries about ancient villages in Africa and the Middle East where these natural methods of building have been integral to their society for centuries. I felt inspired and excited about architecture for the first time in a long time and I wanted to find out where I could learn more about this collective way of designing and these ancient methods of building in person. So naturally I started a Google search and the first thing that came up was this eco-construction workshop at a place called Babzwina in Morocco. I felt this immediate certainty about it and I emailed them inquiring if they still had spots available and I received a reply from them the following day and they confirmed that a position could be available for me. So I made a decision and booked my flights and now here I am. It is day three of the workshop today and it's 7 a.m. this morning and the first thing on our program today is going to the local village to walk around but today looks like a good day we've got a pottery workshop later on which I'm really looking forward to and we've got another workshop outside building a lecture later these days are so long I'm absolutely shattered I'm so tired but I feel like what's pushing me through is that I'm genuinely really excited to be here and there's like a lot of energy from everyone being in one space with like the same intentions of like wanting to learn more about natural building and do architecture in a more sustainable and purposeful way. So I'm tired, but there's energy. Let's go. The earth bricks. When, when, when it is too wet inside, they are absorbing the humidity and trying to bring it outside because outside is drier. Becoming interested in natural building feels like I've stepped into a forest and all of a sudden there are so many things branching out from this one area of interest. It feels like it's not just about architecture and building, it's about nature and ecology, it's about history, it's about indigenous knowledge. But at the core of it all, I think it's about learning to live more gently on the land and lessen our reliance on industrialized ways of living, which are unsustainable and damaging for the environment. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is the largest online learning community for creatives. And they offer thousands of classes that cater to a wide range of interests from film to photography, editing, graphic design, gardening or painting. Whenever you learn a new hobby or level up your skill set, it always feels rewarding and it can really help you break away from the monotony of life and create new patterns for yourself. An interest of mine that has been sparked as a result of stepping into the world of natural building is learning more about permaculture and regenerative agriculture, so I've been taking a course on Skillshare to gain more knowledge in the topic. I've also been loving the looks of other classes on there like nature journaling, indoor gardening, watercolour painting. There are just so many great different classes available. And the first 500 people to use the link in the description of this video will get a month's free trial of Skillshare so that you too can learn a new hobby, level up your skill set and just get into something that's been interesting you and thank you to Skillshare for partnering with me yeah it's time for a sensitive girl afternoon activities aka journaling in this patch of sunshine in the window and trying to process everything that I'm experiencing at the moment because I feel like there's just so much going on in my head of like being with new people, learning new things, being in a new environment 
and I just need time to take it all in, really. Tabza, Tabza village. Yeah, in the Urika Valley. Okay. Yeah. For pottery workshop and also extraction of the. So are we gonna get the? Are we gonna find the clay ourselves? Yeah, yeah. Wow. 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 <laughs> that's the best. Yeah, that's the best clay. This one. What we call it? The gray. Ah, gray. Yeah. This one is very, very soft. If you touch it, it is one most people make it the mask mm -hmm. or take shower for clay with that. Mm -hmm. Touch it, it didn't pass, please, for others. Like this, you know. Mm -hmm. Then it's also possible to touch other one. Then you find this mm -hmm. different. You move to the top slowly like that, to the top. You move to the top slowly. The other hand like that, it didn't press down. Close. You see? That's the technique, easy technique to know. No, don't, don't make it like that. Make it your finger here. This no, like that, like that, and like that. And in here you need press down here, very stronger, like that, for to keep your clay center. See, keep like that. Move your hand slowly up. Move your hand slowly up. No press, slowly. No press, softly. Good, softly, softly. Now it's center. This is the dog. Okay. Now try. Yes, no. Two finger in the top like that. Open it. In the middle, in the middle, in center, no. In center, in center, uh -huh. yes. Press slowly down, bravo, good job. Paul, 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 bravo, good job. Yes, up, bravo. Good job. Please, in the thick layer. It's the simple things. I'm sitting here journaling, aka having a little conversation with myself. And then I thought, let me speak to the camera. Sometimes when I go to journal in the morning, I have so many like separate things that I wanna delve into in my head. And so I do like little bullet points of like the different topics that I wanna write about. And sometimes when I'm journaling, I wish that this would be a conversation with someone rather than just something that's in my own head. But I also think it's a nice way to get your own perspective on things and then Things will eventuate into conversations one day. But I've written three points down. The first one being centeredness, the innate spirituality of self-care. Maybe you watched my last video, maybe you didn't. But I was trying to explore more of what makes me feel centered and what makes me feel like grounded. Because I found that after a bit of time of not having the usual habits and rituals that I have in my life that I equate with self-care, I felt really off-center and kind of not like myself. And then I was like, okay, what makes me feel at center? What makes me feel grounded? Let me do those things. And then I felt so much more like myself and so much more, yeah, at peace after doing those things. And I reminded myself of that this morning as well, because during this workshop, we are in a group and all the activities are group activities. And the days are really long. We're starting at like seven and finishing at 10. 
and I haven't been having much time over the past few days to do these things that make me feel centered. And so this morning I was like, let me just write off the first couple of activities and spend some time with myself to make myself feel centered. And even after just half an hour of listening to music, being in the morning sun, stretching, moving my body, journaling, I feel so good. And I say the innate spirituality of self-care because I feel like those things that I do make me feel more connected to myself, but also make me feel more connected to source and something larger than myself, you know? And the two go hand in hand. It's like, I feel connected to myself, I feel connected to source. They go together, which makes me kind of feel like those things that I do almost feel like prayer or like worship to source and also worship to myself. So I feel like the innate spirituality of self-care, there's a concept there to unpack. And then the other point that I said is not needing a goalpost, it's okay to explore the path unfolds. And the reason that is on my mind is because yesterday I was talking with someone on the workshop here and she asked me like what my goal is with architecture, what I want to do with architecture. And I was like, huh, oh, it's a good question. <laughs> it's a really good question. And my answer was like, I actually just want to explore more and just follow what I feel inspired by with architecture, which is like what I'm doing here at this workshop. Just like follow that tingle of, oh, this is interesting. Maybe there's something here. This feels aligned. This feels interesting. And I feel like I'm just in a space of, yeah, just exploring and things will eventuate and unfold from that space of exploration. And that can be said for like so many things in life, everything in life, just explore and things will unfold. You'll figure it out along the way. There's no pressure to have the goalpost set at the start and that was a really nice reminder to myself and I feel really like at peace with just accepting that like oh I don't, I don't really need to know things will reveal themselves and I don't have a full picture of what what I want to do because I haven't ex explored and experienced and seen as much as I want to like yeah I have an idea maybe of things that I want to do but I don't know I can't say for sure and then the other point I wrote was feeling inspired being around similar people you're never alone in your longing because I think that a lot of the time when we have um, like desires or longings for things that are maybe slightly alternative or different to what is happening in the mainstream it can make us feel quite isolated and maybe like our ideas are too extreme or too much or like too far from the mainstream and being here at this workshop is reminding me that you're never actually alone in in those ideas that you have whatever it is there's always people that resonate and are on the same path being on this course i'm just finding really inspiring because i'm around other people and other architects people in different fields that are looking to create a more sustainable future and i just feel like i don't know i feel like the architecture world that i've existed in for the past four years uh, or longer in studying has just been one really filled with a lot of rigidity and seriousness and i just have not resonated but the people i'm coming across here are looking so much more to to utilize architecture in a way that is beneficial for the world and beneficial for people and is actually a way to improve lives and yeah it just feels really nice to be in a space where people are aligned and like on the same page <laughs> It's filming. <laughs>
It's a new dawn, it's a new life for me, and I'm feeling good. Good morning. <laughs> it is a new day, a new dawn, and today we are going to a village, so we're not going to be working on our building today, which I'm so thankful for because it's been so hot. I think we're going up driving up the mountain for an hour and 40 minutes to get to the village and sounds like a good day we're, we're gonna be out for the whole day and this morning we had yoga which i really enjoyed i'm feeling good it's been so interesting being in a group dynamic because i feel like i'm such an introvert usually i need my alone time to kind of recharge and it's been like a bit of a social experiment for me like being in a group and seeing how i respond to things and how i feel um in different scenarios which has been something new and different for me i think and usually i'm such a like quality time person like i like to be one-on-one -on -one with someone and having conversations where we can really like get to know each other and sometimes in group dynamics it can be quite like fleeting and i mean half the time people are speaking french here and i'm not really understanding that much but i feel like over time in a group especially when you're working on something together you slowly like build connection with people even if you're not having like one-on-one -on -one in depth interactions and today we're gonna go exploring <laughs> workshop was such an affirming reminder to continue following the interests that are aligned with my heart and soul rather than continuing down a path that feels unfulfilling and misaligned. As the wise saying goes, fuck around and find out. You need to step into the water to see how things feel. For example, I wouldn't have felt the drive to find something like this course if I didn't go through the lows of feeling uninspired and depleted by my 9 to 5. 
and I wouldn't be feeling such excitement now about pursuing architecture from a more ecological and vernacular perspective had I not stepped into the unknown by booking my flight and doing this workshop. So this video sort of feels like a testament to committing to the exploration of my passions and to the unfolding of whatever is born from this exploration. I look forward to continuing to share this unfolding with all of you and as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you.